Bigamrepair.com. We're all in this together. The purpose of this video is to talk about fuel pressure and recognize the importance of fuel pressure. So Ford, who supposedly loves us, they know that fuel pressure is such a big deal that if you lose fuel pressure, if you don't have adequate fuel pressure, uh, that you can kill some injectors and it doesn't take long. The reason why you can kill some injectors is because um, what ends up happening is the lack of proper pressure in the fuel uh, results in a scoring of the injector. You actually physically damage the injector because you're not lubricating it. And so it's like, oofta. This is also the reason why if you live in a cold climate, uh, recognized fuel pressure is what you lose when you gel your fuel. Same conversation, you lose fuel pressure. All of a sudden you gel your fuel and now all of a sudden you need injectors. And you're like, ah, oh, crap, right? But even if you live in a warmer climate, it does make sense in a warmer climate, it does make sense to go ahead and, um, and realize the importance of fuel pressure. So what you want to do actually is you want to go ahead and be in a position, be in a world where your fuel pressure is, um, you have a reasonable assurance that, that your fuel pressure is where, it should, is, is where it should be. And so what you need is you need 45 PSI at all times. So 45 PSI or more at idle, 45 PSI driving down the road, 45 PSI when you're dogging on it, 45 PSI. So now recognize that if you turn the key to the on position and you don't have 45 PSI or you only have like 46 PSI, um, the uh, what, what's going to happen when, when you when you when you dog on it? Well, your fuel pressure is going to drop. So you don't have to go for a drive to figure out that you know your fuel pressure is not where it should be when it is uh, at idle and you're at 45, 46, 47 psi. That's just not enough. So a properly functioning stock fuel pump is going to do about 60, 62 psi, something like that, 63 psi. Um, just um, sitting there key on and off and at idle and then you go for a drive and you can figure out okay yeah we're good or no we're, no, we're not good. Now down the path of the conversation about Ford supposedly loves us this is such a big deal and yet Ford did not include a fuel pressure uh, sensor on the Power Stroke 6, six liter platform and so you're like man and so what do you do? Well <laughs> You can do something that 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 would work to um, that would work to mitigate your risk. Your, your risk would be lessened by doing something called a blue spring kit. We'll probably shoot a separate video on all these products we're going to talk about. A separate video on the blue spring kit on the, on the on, well all the pieces we're going to talk about. So, but a blue spring kit you can put in. We actually recommend uh, one of those once every three years if you're not monitoring. Now, monitoring makes a ton of sense. Uh, and that way you just know you're not you know buying blue spring kits to buy to buy blue spring kits. But if um, if if you're going to monitor, that's the better way by far. Now you know in the future what's going on. But recognize that when you're um, so you put a brand new blue spring in there, is that a guarantee of fuel pressure? Well, no, obviously it's not. If your fuel pump is bad. The uh, no fuel pressure regular springs and make a difference, make your pump start pumping right. And so just because you put that spring in doesn't mean that you're golden. So you got to check the, hey, what's the integrity of my fuel pump? And you do that by manually checking fuel pressure. And you can do that either through a little adapter that GlowShift makes that, that we also sell that uh, on, the, on, the, on the bottom of your fuel pressure housing. Uh, there's a little um, a little plug you can pull out and you can put a little adapter that goes from metric to, to one eighth inch national pipe thread and uh, woohoo, right? And, and you, you use that little adapter and monitor fuel pressure that way. That's a way to do it. The other way to do it is to move, move away from the plastic cap that's going to fail on you anyway one day it's going to crack and migrate to a billet aluminum one. The billet aluminum one, um, it's got a, a deal drilled on the top. Uh, 1 8 inch NPT and so that allows you to just go ahead and use that with a little 90 degree fitting adapter and you can check fuel pressure that way, okay? Uh, so that allows you to hook up a gauge, but now the question is what gauge? Well, if you run to your local auto parts store, 
they will rent you a gauge for free. Uh, well, you have to pay for it and then return it, obviously get your money back. But you can go ahead and you can check your fuel pressure manually if that's what you want to do. No harm, no foul. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and say, well, yeah, but I want more than this. I want to be able to know all the time. Well, then I'm selling you, you know, something from Autometer or Glowshift or somebody, some manual dial gauge. And you're like, man, I looked at those and they're like 250 bucks. You're not wrong. They are spendy little buggers. And you're like, huh, well, what, what, what's the other option? Well, the other option is to, is to get like, a, I really like Edge, Edge Products makes the Edge Insight CTS-3, right? And so that Insight CTS-3, um, it, it monitors like a dozen things all at the same time. It beeps at you when bad things are happening, but it supports the addition of extra things, right? So if you wanted to go ahead and you wanted to go ahead and, and, and pick up extra monitoring, you certainly could do that by uh, going ahead and getting the Edge Insight CTS-3, you get their uh, digital to analog converter, and then you get the, the zero to 100 PSI um, fuel pressure regulator. And if you buy those things separately, interestingly enough, you're gonna spend more money than if you just buy what Edge calls their competition kit. Who comes up with these names? I don't know. But that, that's everything that a growing boy or gal needs uh, all in one fine little package. Spendy, so much cheaper than injectors, so much cheaper than the hassle factor and everything else. And that way you're monitoring and you know what's going on. So we'll do another video on that. But as far as fuel pressure goes, you, you might decide, hey, look, you know, I got 150,000 miles on my, on my fuel pump. You know, how many, how many miles a gallon have I been getting? You can carry the one, add the mass, right? Say, how many thousands of gallons of fuel have been through my fuel pump? What does this thing actually owe me? And the answer is nothing. Your fuel pump owes you nothing. You got more than like 130, 140,000 miles on your fuel pump. Have you thought about replacing your fuel pump? <laughs> now, if money is money is is tight, so the fuel pump's you know north of well, maybe it's spendy. <laughs> so no, it's person, it's spendy. We'll, we'll put links in it below. But the um, you could buy what Ford calls a bowl filter kit. Again, who comes up with these names? But that allows you to take the three bolts off the side of the fuel pump uh, that, that hold it onto the frame, take the, some, some fuel line disconnect tools you pick up at your local Harbor Freight for 10 bucks, whatever it is, and take that thing off, set it up on the bench, and have the putty knife at the ready because you're going to have some crap up in there. Have some brake clean, have an old toothbrush, uh, go to town and clean up the insides of that and buy yourself a new lease on life and now you're just out the cost of a gasket kit instead of a fuel pump. And it's like, huh. That's not so bad. Or you could say, you know what? Even if I do that, the pump is not new. You're 100% right. And um, I just, you know, just sell me a fuel pump. I mean, okay, we'll, we'll do that. Or you could say, well, you know, I, I, I see that, that there's better options than, uh, than the Ford OE pump. <laughs> Why, yes, please. Uh, FAST makes, uh, we work for everybody, right? So if you want, you know, if, if you, there's like three or four different solutions. I like fast the best, but there's other ones that we can hook you up with as well. So if you've got, a, if you've got you know, just a, a desire in your heart for a different brand, uh, we, we sell those brands too, right? So if you like AirDog or whatever. So we, 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 we sell all this stuff. So we're not really, um, you know, our goal is not to sell you particular solutions, just to say, hey, here are the categories of solutions that you might want. And so if you get a fast fuel system, uh, a, a little 140 gallon, gallon per hour um, pump there, that'll, that'll set you up for, for, for bigger injectors, it'll set you up for your current injectors, it'll set you up for just everything that you might need. And if you couple that with a sump in your, in your tank and fast pump, fast sump, 100%, buy both of them together. Uh, that way, because 140 gallon gallon per hour um, is a lot. We'll shoot a whole separate video on this. But a fast call is polishing the fuel. It's just fancy words for it goes through the fuel pump over and over and over again because that return line is is getting some serious um, uh, fuel through it. And so what happens is you have a little mini vortex of fuel inside your fuel tank. And uh, so now all of a sudden you're at a quarter tank of fuel on your gauge, on your, on your instrument cluster, and you're sucking air. And you're like, what's going on? How can I, how can I be out of fuel? Well, you're not out of fuel, it's just that you're sucking air. And so, and that kills injectors too. So what you do instead is you pull the fuel from the bottom of the tank, not from the top. And now you're not sucking air anymore and you can, and you can get, full use of the full capacity of your fuel tank. Now, 
In addition to that, uh, there are some other considerations as far as relative returns and fuel bowl deletes and everything else. We'll talk about that in another video. But as winter's coming in this time of year, I mean, for, for us, when, when winter's coming in, it's almost November as I shoot this video. Uh, but think about, do you want to change your fuel pump? I don't know if you do or if you don't. It's totally up to you. There's no right answers. And so it is completely your call on, on, on what you want to do and when you want to do it. Uh, we're just here to help you. Anything you need, uh, we got you. Tech support's always free. Never a goal to sell you stuff, just a goal to tell you stuff. So whatever you need, we got you.